Okay. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. Um, it talks on multi-cloud foundations with Terraform. <clears throat> First off, I'd like to talk to you about how long would it take you before you or your company or your developers can deploy to production? You know, just think about that right now in your company and your current way of working. What if you're starting from scratch? What is the first time that you're actually, you know, <clears throat> diving into the cloud journey um, and you've been on-prem and you're an infrastructure engineer and you're going, what is this cloud thing? My name is Carl Javier. I'm a principal consultant engineer at Servian and I work with a lot of clients um, <clears throat> with their cloud journey um, and helping them get onto the cloud and setting up their cloud foundations so we can quickly deploy to production for their applications and business. So I used to live in a data center. Um, I used to be an infrastructure engineer. Here's me in a data center, happily installing something on bare metal servers um, many, many, many moons ago. This was my life. <laughs> you can see me sitting in a rack, using it as a tea and coffee break area, moving from hot and on cold aisle. Um, and no, that's not my cabling. That was probably me back in the day doing a network audit on a factory on their network cabling, but that wasn't fun. But set up a data centers takes a long time. Um, if you've been in the infrastructure game and you've been in data center longs, you know how, what the process is. And this is roughly kind of the number of things you have to set up in, to set up a, a data center, you know, power, backspace, UPS, three-phase cooling, blaze servers, routers and switches. Then you've got to order the stuff, um, make sure the order's correct, and then you've got to wait for it. Um, the worst thing is what, you know, waiting for equipment that's not in region or, you, you know, the vendor isn't ready for it um, or hasn't made enough of what you need or they misplace something. This usually takes a while. And then you've got to stage it and build it and actually install it. You know, crazy memories. I reckon eight months to a year to set up a data center. I think the best that I got uh, were building data centers for companies and clients was six months um, at best. Um, and yes, I have had that issue where I've built a data center and we've ordered all the wrong parts and we've delayed the project for another six months. So even you know one power cable, one order goes wrong, can make the whole difference to your project. Meanwhile, your developers or your application folks wanting to deploy stuff or waiting for a VM or waiting for an environment and they're just sitting there um, <laughs> developing locally or testing locally on their laptops, which isn't a good thing for the business. But cloud came along and you usually start with your first cloud. You know, you choose your first cloud, you get that working, or you start reading into it and then another one comes along. And this is what I'm starting to see as a consultant that we've got more than one cloud. Um, being used in all our uh, enterprise applications. And then a third one comes along. Now all of a sudden, but then we've also got the guys on-prem like myself. What do we do? We're staying on-prem, are we moving here and that? Gets really complex, really, really quick. Um, and now your company is looking at a setup like this. Um, you've got on-prem, um, you've got multiple clouds up, up there that you need to connect to. Um, you don't know how this is actually all going to work. So what do you do? So we obviously, it was our first time, as I said, we were starting from scratch. Um, you start with your first cloud. So what do we need to do to set up our first cloud? Well, here's an example, again, setting up your account, setting up security, and this is, this is, this is amongst all the clouds that needs to be set up when connecting your enterprise uh, network or a company and moving into the cloud. You got networking, uh, you've got all these different technologies that are different to how it is on-prem and, and you know, traditional data center infrastructure. Um, and the majority of the time, you're spent figuring this out and going, how does this all work? Uh, because I'm not a developer or I'm not a, uh, I'm not a you know, cloud person yet, I'm still figuring this out. And you, you spend most of your time doing this. Um, to be honest, when I first did this the first time, it took me six months. Um, and a few other companies that I've seen and I've worked with can take six to eight months as well, at the same time as deploying a, a data center, um, which, which isn't fun. Meanwhile, your developers are still waiting for a VM in an environment uh, to deploy to. They're still deploying locally and we still haven't given them an environment to spin up. Eventually, you get your first design. Um, 
you get your first design, you get there and it kind of looks like this. It's got a bit of on-prem, you've got, you know, you've got a dev, dev environment, some sort of test, some sort of shared service VPC, and then there's a bunch of a box on the side, somewhere of other cloud stuff that you don't really understand. So best thing about the cloud, we don't have to order any equipment. I guess we can log in the console or my advice to most clients is codify your design. Codify design with Terraform. I just want to say I love infrastructure as code. Um, considering I've come from a networking and infrastructure background where everything was manual, everything had to be manually put in and stuff like that. This whole Terraform creating things as code has been the best things in sliced bread. Um, it allows us to interface with all the clouds and more and not just all the clouds. Meanwhile, us developers are still probably waiting for a, a VM for, for an environment to deploy to so they can deploy. So we need to crack on with giving them an environment. So my recommendations is work out what your uh, cloud resources are going to be. Um, go to the Terraform docs webpage, work out all the cloud environment stuff that you need and codify that. Um, and work and gather all your components, store it in your own Git repository. You probably want to codify all these things as well, as I said, um, and all your clouds. So going through the uh, Terraform repo, going to the cloud vendor provisioner and working on how you set up user accounts, how you set up provisions, how do you set up you know, VPCs, site arrangers and all that. And then how do you combine this all um, using Terraform resources? And then once you've got all your resources and you've start working out, okay, there's a lot of resources. We need to start combining these resources into modules. Why? So you can, you can reuse it and template it or improve it or in, improve it internally for your, your, you know, your current project or the next project, or, you know, someone else wants a bit of help. So what does that look like modules? Well, you start, when you get set up all your resources, you start combining all your resources into modules. So this is an example of, you know, putting modules together for your first cloud. You'll have an accounts modules where that's got all the permissions and all the accounts, how to set that up. You'll have, you know, your IAM or your permissions on, you know, user permissions and um, security stuff in one module. And then you've got your network guys that are, will have their modules as well about how things connect. And then you've got environment modules if you modularize your environments, um, it really ensures that all your environments are literally set up the same, especially, you know, in dev, test and prod. So, and, and it makes things really easy and repeatable. And if you're not happy, or well, as a tip, if you want to get a head start and not, don't want to go through the Terraform docs or get, you know, to create your Terraform modules, you can always go to the public modules website. Um, and customize the resources to what you need. So, oh, oh, and also use them. So as a starting point, uh, as an advice, I usually recommend most clients to start using the, uh, the public uh, Terraform registry and start with creating their cloud foundation or environments um, to start to create their uh, environments um, for the developers and for their first cloud. So an example here is a VPC, which is done in AWS, but VPCs, VNets, and all that, they cross all clouds are very, very similar, but it's a foundational piece when creating a network or a so-called cloud data center in the cloud. But if you're not happy with the public module, you could always customize it yourself. You could always click on the GitHub link on the Terraform public registry, uh, download it, and modify what's in there to, to your liking or to your company's requirements. So here's an example of where I've done many times tagging requirements or naming conventions, because everyone, we all love naming conventions at every company, <laughs> and, um, of how you know, a route table should be named or in making sure that the resource or the Terraform resource has a, an owner, a cost center, and any of the other client specific or environment specific things that um, a, client, a client or your environment would need. And then you could store this as well and store it privately in your own Git repo somewhere. And then once you've built up all your modules um, of all these foundational cloud infrastructure with Terraform and Terraform modules, this kind of turns into a cloud foundations. This is kind of a, a template. And what 
and I've done this many times with a lot of my clients. We've got a set of pre-built workflows using Terraform to, um, to set up uh, and be ready to deploy production in a fraction of the time. I would say I've done this in a week for a lot of my clients. Um, and this is a good example of a cloud foundations that we've done with a client, obviously one of the clouds there. We'll set this all up using Terraform. Um, all these components are all modularized. Um, we can easily pick using Terraform modules what we want to enable and not enable. Also, since things are modularized and there's inputs and different variables that you can change, we can change and customize a lot of these components to suit the needs of your uh, client's environment. Um, from experience, um, yeah, I think I've set this up, as I said before, within a week or two weeks, so we can get you know, straight into deploying or working how to deploy the apps and making sure that we're deploying to production faster for developers. Um, but before we allow, you know, developers to deploy to dev test and prod, my other recommendation is you should be automating your environment deployments. Um, not just uh, manually running your Terraform plan apply and any, any plan apply um, locally on a laptop, you might, you might as well see I see and my recommendation of what I've done for with a lot of clients is automating things with Terraform Enterprise. Um, it gives engineers, developers, and operations, uh, you know, repeatability, a single workflow to deploy the infrastructure to all clouds. You can integrate, well, I've integrated a lot of uh, CI, 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 CD platforms and workflows uh, with Terraform Enterprise, and you can see there that Terraform Enterprise interacts with all the clouds, all the, all the major clouds and more, um, and it gives, um, what's called everyone the same kind of workflow and language kind of to be able to spin up resources in all the different clouds in the same same way using the same language. So this allows, actually I've seen operations um, help our people out troubleshoot or be able to pick up another cloud really quickly with Terraform. So why do we do all this? So we can enable our developers. So then now once we've got an environment set up, they can now deploy to cloud. Um, that's basically what you know. What I do on a day-to-day -day basis is enable developers. Easier. So then we rinse and repeat, and we move to the next cloud. Or you can call Serbian, and, and we can help you out as well. So uh, just to close things off, some key messages for using Terraform is um, resources lead into modules, which equals to fun and repeatability. So modules can be reused, version forked, modified for future deployments or shared with uh, uh, other people, other internal people to collaborate with. Um, each cloud resource is actually a little bit different as well. Um, grouping resources, you know, uh, some of the resources have, you know, you want to be able to group similar resources that have a similar life cycle. Uh, for example, um, you don't want to set uh, your resources together and, and one of the resources you do daily changes on it. Um, you want to, and, and then there's resources out there that you set and forget. So you want to make sure you group your modules and your resources correctly um, and think about the life cycle about each one of those cloud resources. And once you've built all your resources, you've got cloud foundations with, with Terraform, which can spin up basically cloud environments or so-called data centers in a fraction of time with Terraform infrastructure as code. Uh, this enables quicker, as I've seen before, with quicker deployment to production for all our developers and our engineers so we can quickly get business benefit out of using the cloud. And um, I'll leave you with that. And that that's it.